This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Time now is 427 here on your Tuesday morning. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Meredith Barrick. I'm Rafael Sanchez. Lauren Casey's on vacation. It's Tuesday. I was going to just step all over you because it's good fine. to see you on a Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. good. It's a good And day. it's okay. We're still getting used to this uh, early morning thing here for you. The rain is out of the way. Cooler temperatures are on tap. Our Alyssa Donovan is here. Always energetic and excited. Tell us something good like, you know, it's going to warm up just a little bit today. Not just a little today. Bit. Not today. Sorry to bring it to you. Tomorrow will warm a little bit <laughs> okay. more. A smidge. Okay. You didn't set me up for good news there. So we are going to see a cooler day today. Those temperatures were starting in the 50s this morning. We're only going to climb a few degrees throughout the day into the mid 50s for our daytime high. So we are below average and we are going to see those breezy conditions continue. We have this strong cr pressure gradient in place from that system that moved through yesterday that brought us that cooler air. So we are going to see those breezy conditions once again this afternoon and then an increase in cloud coverage. Tomorrow we'll see a little bit warmer temperatures in the forecast. Tomorrow. 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 <laughs> Not bring, much, just a little bit. So I'll bring you flowers tomorrow okay. for the good news. Um, hold you to that. Okay. I got them. All right, we are following some developing news involving a daycare center on the city's northeast side. So in this case, Meredith, a vehicle crashed into this building. This is the Footsteps in Paradise Child Care Ministry. This is located at 30th and Gale. Officers say an SUV drove off the road and into that building, as you can see, leaving quite a mess, a big hole on the side of that building. The driver of the SUV told police that someone pushed them off the road. It's still not clear as to what parents will be doing this morning, so call ahead. It seems like there's a big mess there. A lot of repairs have to be done. And an arrest warrant is out this morning for a Fisher's man accused of stealing a homeowner's credit card. Take a good look at your screen because police are looking for Christopher Salvo. He is accused of theft. Court records show Salvo took a homeowner's credit card, then used it to spend more than $250 at a Noblesville CVS. We told you back in September that Salvo was facing home improvement fraud charges in a separate case. And so all of us, we want better cell phone service, right? We want Absolutely. better for our tablets, for our smartphones. So this is a fight over cell phone related technology. We're talking about 5G and the towers are just simply popping up to support that service. Uh, Carmel approved a resolution calling on the state legislature to study the effects of 5G cell phone towers. Now some homeowners and advocates want more research done on 5G and how it might impact the health and safety of their families. That story and much more coming up. News, traffic, and weather right here on Good Morning Indiana on this Tuesday. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Now on Good Morning Indiana, business owners waking up to a hole in the side of a child care building after a vehicle slammed into it early this morning, but the driver says caused the crash. And a criminal investigation now underway after three Greenfield administrators were overpaid $650,000. Call 6 investigates where they got the, all of that money. Plus, community leaders are working to prevent gun violence. Why they are teaching young people about a law on the books here in Indiana. 4.30 on your Tuesday morning. Thanks for starting the day with us. I'm Meredith Barrick. I'm Rafael Sanchez. Lauren Casey's on vacation. Did you say 4.30? It is 4.30. Okay, just making sure. 4.30. Wow, it's early in the morning. I know we wish we were in a time machine and we could magically be at, oh, 6.30 already, but oh no, it's 4.30. And it is cold out there when you step outside. Yes, it's a little brisk today and we're seeing those temperatures drop just a couple degrees yet this morning. We have those clear skies out there. A much cooler start than what we saw yesterday. 50 degrees right now in Indianapolis, 46 in Crawfordsville, 54 in Muncie, 49 in Tipton. As we head through the morning, we are going to see those temperatures fall just a little bit. So what's going on? We had that cold front pass through yesterday. That brought us that cooler air. Now we have that high pressure building into place. We are going to start with clear skies this morning, which is helping us drop a few degrees yet in temperatures. We'll be right around 48 degrees by 8 a.m. this morning in Indianapolis. And then we are going to see those clouds increase from the north as we head into the afternoon hour. Temperatures, though, not climbing too much. We're going to see those temperatures just into the mid 50s this afternoon. We have that cooler air in place. We're also going to see some breezy conditions once again today with those west southwest winds as we see those sustain about 20 miles per hour by the afternoon and we are going to see those gusts close to 30 miles per hour once again today as well. So a much cooler day. We do have some warmer temperatures as we head through the seven day forecast. All of those details coming up.
Alyssa, thank you so much. As we take a look now outside at your traffic as it's building this morning, very light this morning. So good morning to Carmel, Bargersville, and Bloomington. This is the live look at I-465. It's I-69 on State Road 37, as you can see, very light this morning. Now let's switch our cameras to I-65 at 30th Street, as you can see as well, early this morning. A perfect time just to get up and get to work, as, as you can see, nobody, nobody's on the road. We'll keep an eye on traffic throughout the morning. Meredith? New overnight at daycare on the city's northeast side is in need of repairs after a car crashed right into the building. Police were called to footsteps in Paradise Child Care Ministry at 30th and Gale around 1 this morning. Officers say an SUV drove off the road and into the building, leaving a big hole in the side. The vehicle kept going and then rear-ended a minivan parked nearby. The driver of the SUV said someone pushed him off the road, causing him to crash. Thankfully, no children were there at that time and no one was hurt, but if your child does attend this daycare, please call ahead to see what their plans are for today. At the time, now is 4.33. A criminal investigation now underway this morning after local school administrators were overpaid more than a half a million dollars. A newly released audit shows three Greenfield Central Community School Corporation administrators were overpaid more than $651,000 in health insurance benefits. The district notified the State Board of Accounts after the superintendent became suspicious about an improper allocation of funds in August of last year. The three administrators were placed on administrative leave when the discrepancies were found. None are currently working for that school district right now. The State Board of Accounts is asking them to repay the amount they were overpaid. The former administrators are also being asked to pay back more than $33,000 in special investigation costs. You can read more about this story by going to the RTV6 app and clicking on this story there in the app. A disciplinary hearing over groping allegations against Attorney General Curtis Hill continues today. A disciplinary commission will determine if Hill faces any legal discipline over accusations he touched four women inappropriately. It allegedly happened at an Indianapolis bar during a party after the legislature adjourned last year. Indiana Representative Mara Candelaria Reardon and three other women testified Monday describing how they felt shock, shame and embarrassment. Reardon said she told a lobbyist soon after after the incident that Hill was, quote, a creeper, Hill could be stripped of his law license, which is required to serve as the attorney general. He denies the allegations against him. A court hearing today could prevent future interviews in a bizarre case attracting international attention. A prosecutors in Tippecanoe County filed a motion on Monday. They're asking a judge to issue a gag order in the Christine and Michael Barnett case. The former couple is accused of adopting a child from the Ukraine and legally changing her age to 20 two years old, renting her an apartment and allegedly abandoning her in Lafayette. The Barnetts claim the girl is actually an adult pretending to be a child. They face neglect charges. Gun violence in Indianapolis is an ongoing problem that community leaders are trying to solve. Last night, the Marion County Prosecutor's Office held a meeting with young people about preventing gun violence. Dozens of people took part in the event and leaders took time to explain the red flag law. The law was put into place after the mid 2000s thousands when officer Jake Laird was shot by a man who had been deemed dangerous. But at the time, there were no laws to keep guns away from him. Prosecutor Ryan Mears says he wants people to know the red flag law helps prevent gun violence, but says it could go further, especially when guns are taken from a person. There needs to be more follow-up where we as prosecutors have the ability to make sure that that person does not have the ability to purchase firearms uh, down the road. Lawmakers who have opposed making the red flag law stricter say they don't want to infringe on Hoosier Second Amendment rights. Since I have two young kids, I worry about how fast people drive. RTV6 is always working for you, and today we're giving a voice to people who are concerned about speeding drivers in Irvington. Now, this comes after police say someone was driving too fast on Arlington Avenue just south of 10th Street yesterday morning. This was breaking news for, for you here on Good Morning Indiana when they hit another car, killing the person inside. Now, neighbors say cars often go 20 to 30 miles per hour over the speed limit on Arlington. Katie Butler, she's afraid to let her kids play outside because of this very issue. I'm not the only mom on the street. There's several families I know with preschool age kids and um, you don't ever see them playing out in the front yard. 
Metro Police says officers working that neighborhood will watch for speeding. And no matter where you live in the city, you can report speeding or traffic safety concerns online. You can find a link by going to the RTV6 app and clicking on this story. A new baby box is now operational in Fortville. It's the latest of several baby boxes installed around Indiana. The box was unveiled at the fire department on Broadway Street yesterday. Baby boxes are a safe place where parents can surrender newborns under the state's safe haven law, no questions asked. The event included a translator as part of a new effort to include multiple languages on baby boxes, so there is no language barrier. These babies are important to me, and if I have to change my course just a bit to make sure that I'm hitting every community in the state, then we're going to change course a little bit and make sure that our friends um, that don't speak English know that this is available in their community. The installation of this baby box comes less than a week after a baby was found abandoned in Seymour, just a mile away from a baby box location. In that case, the child survived. Uh, so Meredith, add me to your Christmas list because okay. just in time for the holiday season, FAO Shorts is bringing its signature style and more importantly, its signature toys right here to Indianapolis. A grand opening celebration will be held later this morning at the new location inside Indianapolis International Airport. The airport authority says FAO Shores is one of 10 new retailers, food and beverage shops that will open for business this month. Uh, no matter your age, that place is fun. Hey, and if you haven't gotten your flu shot yet, the Marion County Health Department is hosting a vaccine clinic today. The latest low-cost flu shot clinic goes from 9 a.m. to noon at Southport United Methodist Church on East Southport Road. The vaccines cost $20 for people ages 2 and older. They are free for kids younger than 2. I am so ready to break out my blue and gold tie because the Pacers' DeMontis Sabonis has agreed to a new four-year deal. He can make up to 80 million million dollars with incentives. Go Pacers! That is almost the exact contract that Miles Turner is starting with this season. The Sabonis averaged 14 points and 9 boards off the bench last season. As you may recall, he'll be a starter alongside Miles. This season, they could become a restricted free agent at the end of the year if a deal was not made. President Trump is now demanding Republicans stand by him in the impeachment inquiry, coming up the disagreements developing within the GOP. And the National Weather Service has confirmed three tornadoes actually touched down in Texas. Next, the damage left behind by those severe storms. But first, let's check in with our very own Alyssa Donovan. Good morning. Good morning. We are having a cool and breezy Tuesday ahead. A little bit more cloud coverage throughout the day as well, but we do have some more sunshine and a little bit warmer temperatures. As we head through the forecast, all of those details coming up. With Fairlife Ultra Filtered Milk. Welcome back. Time now is 442 and we are taking a live look at I-465 at I-74 US 136 on the west side. No issues to report right now out there on the roadways. We hope you have a great morning. Here's a look at some other stories making national headlines today. The National Washington Nationals and the Houston Astros are ready to play ball as the first game of the World Series will be held tonight in Houston. This is the first World Series for the Nationals. The Astros won a championship back in 2017. And Chicago Public Schools have canceled class again as teachers strike now heads into its sixth day. Democratic presidential candidate Elizabeth Warren expected to rally with those teachers today. The union says it's seeking better pay, smaller class sizes, and more support for their staff. A U.S. diplomat formerly stationed in Ukraine is set to testify behind closed doors today in the impeachment inquiry. President Trump still says he has done nothing wrong and that Republicans should stand up for him and his administration. ABC's Karina Mitchell explains. Uh, President Trump is again, demanding so Republicans fall in line. They have to get tougher and fight because the Democrats are trying to hurt the Republican Party for the election. He lashed out, calling on his party to be more united, like, like his Democratic President. rivals. I think they're lousy politicians, but two things they have. They're vicious and they stick together. They don't have Mitt Romney in their midst. Romney has said he's open to the idea of impeaching the president if the evidence is there. Holding up funds to a foreign nation, particularly one that's uh, uh, under military threat, in order to fulfill a political purpose is a real problem. 
During an interview with Fox News overnight, Trump condemned the investigation, calling it unfair, but admitted... Everybody tells me it's going to be great for us as a Republican Party if they actually impeach me. I don't know if that's true or not. As the president continues to condemn what he calls a phony investigation on Capitol Hill, testimony continues. Today, William Taylor, the top U.S. diplomat in Ukraine, will testify behind closed doors. He raised the alarm about the possibility Trump may have withheld aid for political gain. In a text message to the U.S. ambassador to the EU, Taylor wrote, quote, I think it's crazy to withhold security assistance for help with a political campaign. Trump is shrugging it off. They're interviewing ambassadors who I'd never heard of. I don't know who these people are. House Democrats voted along party lines to block an attempt by Republicans to censure House Intelligence Chairman Adam Schiff over his handling of the impeachment inquiry. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. Four drug companies have reached a last minute settlement as the opioid trial was set to begin in Ohio. Amerisource Bergen, Cardinal Health and McKesson will pay a collective $215 million and that's immediately. Uh, Teva Pharmaceutical owes $20 million with $5 billion of that to be paid before the end of the year. They were all supposed to begin a trial in Cleveland yesterday, but of course, they settled. Walgreens and other pharmacies were not included in the settlement, and they will get a new trial date in six months. These cases were among the first among over 2,000 plaintiff communities to head to trial over the opioid crisis. This morning, people living in North Texas are left searching through rubble after severe storms moved through the area Sunday night. The National Weather Service reports an EF3 tornado touchdown in Dallas. The storm caused widespread damage, destroying cars, homes, and businesses. The NWS also confirmed two other tornadoes, one in Rowlett and another in Wills Point. No deaths have been reported, but at least six people were taken to the hospital because of injuries from the storms. And we saw a little bit of that storm line here yesterday, Alyssa, obviously not as severe as what they saw down That's in right. Texas. We have that heavy rainfall from that. Can we expect any more severe weather this week? So the good news is we are done with severe weather for this week. We are actually starting a dry streak today, starting with that cooler weather as well. What we do have lingering is some gusty winds from that system. So just expect that, especially this afternoon, we'll continue to see those breezy conditions. But this is the start of really a pleasant few days ahead where we're just going to see those temperatures a little bit below average and then we do have just a few stray shower chances as we head into Friday and again on Sunday. So just a little bit here and there when it comes to precipitation. Today we're starting a little cooler this morning. We're right around 50 degrees in Indianapolis. Those winds still a little breezy out of the southwest about 15 miles per hour but you can see we have clear skies. Kokomo at 49, Bloomington at 53. Those clear skies are going to help cool us down yet a little bit this morning. Not a cloud in the sky right now. We will see a little bit more cloud coverage though as we head through the day. So here's what I'm talking about. As we head into the next hour or so here, we are going to see those temperatures drop off because we do have those clear skies and those breezy conditions. We're going to be in the mid 40s for areas to the north, 48 right around Indianapolis to start your day today. And then we'll see those clouds build in from the north this afternoon. That will continue to build in throughout the day before we start to see that clear out overnight, which means we're going to be even cooler to start tomorrow morning. What's going on is we just have this upper level energy to the north that's going to drop down today, bringing us that cloud coverage. Maybe see a sprinkle today, but more likely we will stay dry. But you can see we have this strong pressure gradient as well, which is why we are seeing those breezy conditions today. That's all going to push out though over the next 24 hours as we see high pressure take control, which is also going to help clear out a lot of that cloud coverage. We'll see a sunnier day tomorrow with those temperatures climbing just a few degrees warmer. But today we are going to see those breezy conditions. Sustained winds will be up to 20 miles per hour with those gusts close to 30 miles per hour by the afternoon and evening before that system completely moves out of the area. So today starting a little cool this morning in the 40s and then we are going to see those clouds increase throughout your Tuesday. Temperatures only climbing into the mid 50s. Usually we're still in the mid 60s this time of year. So it is a cooler day today. You're going to want a light jacket throughout your day and then tomorrow we'll 
climb a little bit warmer with those temperatures into the low 60s, still just a little bit below average. But the good news is tomorrow we'll see a lot more sunshine before we start to build in a little bit more cloud coverage on Thursday. Stray shower possible on Friday with another passing front that will take our temperatures down again. Look at this. By Saturday morning, we are into the 30s with those temperatures. Then we are back into the 60s to start Sunday with another chance of a spot shower. Alyssa, thank you. We are taking a live look right now at I-70 at the North Split. Just a few cars out there to get your Tuesday morning started. We're going to take a turn now at I-70 east of the airport ramps. Same goes for this area. Just a few cars out there. No issues to report right now. Researchers believe a virus could be at the cause of a mysterious polio-like disease that's now affecting children. The illness known as FM AFM can cause weakness and paralysis. The first cases were recorded back in 2012, and there have been around 600 other cases since. Now, using a virus hunting tool called Verscan, researchers examined AFM patients' spinal fluid. They found two strains of the enterovirus in nearly 70% of AFM patients that were tested. The viruses are fairly common and can cause cold-like symptoms. Actress Lori Loughlin's daughters are no longer enrolled at the University of Southern California after accusations of her involvement in the college admissions scandal. The USC Registrar's Office released a statement saying Olivia Jade and Isabella Giannulli are currently not enrolled. Laughlin and her husband, Massimo Giannulli, are accused of paying $500,000 to a fake charity to get their daughters into USC. They also falsely designated them as crew team recruits. Laughlin and her husband have been charged with conspiracy fraud and conspiracy to commit money Money laundering both pleaded not guilty. There are lots of phone cases out there, but how about one that looks and reacts like your skin? Coming up, the technology behind this strange phone cover. And still to come, it was a tragedy that left an Uber driver and an Indianapolis Colts player dead. Brand new at six on Good Morning Indiana and only on RTV6, we'll share one widow's emotional mission. But first, let's check in with Court TV. I'm Vinny Politan. Today on Court TV, Ezra McCandless has been charged in the death of her ex, Alex Woodworth. And prosecutors want the jury to hear entries from her journal. Prosecutors also expected to call the defendant's own father to the stand. High drama in the courtroom today, live from Wisconsin on Court TV. Vinny, thank you. And don't forget, you can watch the all-new Court TV live on your mobile device by visiting CourtTV.com. We'll be right back. and refined Atlas SE with technology. So say goodbye. Adios. Hey, Saranara to all those ordinary phone cases. Yeah, because one company is creating some that look and react like human skin. Take a look if this doesn't creep you out like it does me. The kind of creepy cover, no, this is creepy, can be pinched and even responds to tickling. It will display emojis that correspond to how you touch it, like a laughing emoji if you tickle it. The artificial skin was created using silicone and sensors to give it a real life look and feel. It was designed by the University of Bristol in England. So far, it is only a project and has not been put up for sale yet. I will pass on that. That's what I'm getting you for Christmas. Ugh. Okay, there Gives we go. Gives me the heebie-jeebies. So attention, <laughs> friends, fans, and for those of you who are millennials, Friends is a TV show back in the 90s, but we'll get to that in a moment. A hilarious new costume is now available for Halloween. It's that giant turkey mask like the one that Monica wore in season five. She wears the turkey on her head to cheer up Chandler on Thanksgiving. It's now available on the gift website Firebox. Other popular friends related costumes include the holiday armadillo and the Sputnik <laughs> potato suit. And again, for those of you who are millennials, sort of the friends are sort of the Brady Bunch to us. To I them. loved friends. Right. Okay, I'm just saying. I would, I would totally be Spudnik. Would you? Yeah, that, that was one of the funniest ones, or the holiday. Google holiday. it, it's a good show. Depending on what the weather, though, <laughs> is going to be on Halloween, you might need to dress up as Joey in that episode where he wears oh, the, all his layers. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, that might be a good costume this year. <laughs> or yes. you can go as Phoebe and, and sing Smelly Cat. There but you go. okay, we are. There you go. Let's get back on we track. We could keep the going. Yes, that's right. yes. Could. Let's get on track. It's a cool start today to a cooler day. Breezy conditions throughout the day as well. We'll see clouds increase this afternoon. 56 degrees for the high tomorrow. A little bit warmer with a little bit more sunshine. We are back into the 50s by Friday, though, with a chance of showers in the forecast.